since this is our kitchen floor, as you can see, it's completely worn out and had it. Uh, it's a quarter to my wife anyway. So, instead of looking like this, it now looks like this. It's coming up. Now you can use a hot air gun like this and heat the surface for about 10 minutes and then when it's just starting to kind of bubble and get a little bit of steam coming off it, you can get a scraper under there and lift it off. But it takes, one, it takes a long time and two, the fumes are pretty horrible so you need a lot of ventilation. Now if you've got a small area, maybe a metre or two squared, then yeah, this is a pretty cheap option. It takes a long time, it's a bit nasty. If you've got a bigger area though, you need a bigger tool. Something like this. Now this one's made by Bosch, but really any SDS drill will do. So the SDS is a special mechanism. So you see this has got three features down here. You've got drill, drill and that SDS style hammer, and then just hammer. So you want a drill which has just got this hammer feature on it, SDS. I'm just about to see on the chop there, those letters. And what it means is, you've got this fitting on the end, and that allows it to grab hold of it and then put this, uh, kind of series of impacts into it without rotating. Uh, this is excellent. And then you can get this chisel point that goes on the end of it as well. I think it's about 14 pounds, so not that expensive. All right, let me show you what that does. Okay, definitely worth putting some safety specs on in case the end of that chips hits a nail or something like that and gets something in your eye. So safety specs. And it's very loud, so ear defenders are a must. And then you get left with this kind of residual glue, the backing on there, which it doesn't really lift off. You can see here's the self-leveling compound they put down just underneath. So to get rid of that, we need another tool. Now you can buy these in the UK from a company called Screwfix, and they're about that long. They come with a little aluminium handle with an orange grip on the end of it. Not massively well made, but they do work. And then it grips in this aluminium cast housing, this little blade, and you can scrape the floor. Now, luckily, I've got access to a lathe, so I've turned a little adapter shaft there and adapted it to this old curtain pole that's pretty long, and that means I can then do this. off pretty quickly. Now if you haven't got a lathe and you can't turn an adapter shaft then yeah you'll get stuck with a short one. You might be able to buy a longer one of these I'm not sure. If you can then go for that but this this is definitely worth getting just to finish the job off. Get to that foam backing. Right well I've done all that side. Just got that bit to go.
there it is finished. Still took a couple of hours, but it's a pretty good method overall. Now all I've got to do is get that lot installed. I'm starting to get the main floor down now. It's always the fiddly bits at the corners that take a while, but we'll get there. If you need to get into really tight corners and chop pieces off that are already stuck in place, then these, these vibrosaws are excellent. I use one over here. Chop this out that allows me to get the board right underneath. Same on this side. Job of it. Another good thing about these is when they vibrate, this you can put your hand on there, it doesn't cut your skin, it only cuts hard resistant materials, so pretty safe to use. It should just come out. Sometime later, it's all done. So doing the long bits is okay. It's always the fiddly bits into the corner, cutting in around there. And because this is that click clock stuff, you've got to sort of plan ahead and just make sure you, you don't uh, paint yourself into a corner. Right, yeah, that last one's a little bit tricky just down there, but we got them. Got a bit of a gap here. We've got obviously put the skirting on. The kickboards need trimming down now because obviously we're taking up a bit more space so I'll cut those down and fit those back on and then all the skirting can go back on around there and then all the kickboards need trimming just to go underneath here obviously they need to worry about that much taken off the bottom just so they can get back in again so I hope someone found all that useful yeah, if you're getting those lino floors off, just get yourself an SDS drill and get one of those kind of tile floor removers adapters and then you'll soon have the lino part removed. If you've got any um, adhesive or foam remaining, get yourself a heavy duty scraper, something pretty big and chunky, long handle so you can stand up ideally and scrape that back to the main sub base, main floor. And then lay whatever floor you're going to lay. In this case, this is click laminate, uh, but whatever you're going to do. Now, I, I always, if I'm laying floors, so I did the hall in there as well. Uh, I always take the skirting off and then you can get it right up to there. You've got to leave about 8 to 10 mil gap for expansion, otherwise it will buckle and kick the floor up. Uh, but that makes a neater job of it. And then uh, around the little architraves, you can just use that special vibra saw just to cut the wood away. So there we go. Well, good luck with your project. <laughs>